Well, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, uh, my name is Brian Pontius. I'm a co-founder at Rise Up Animation. And to joining me today uh, as co-moderator is Janera Johnson. Janera, what up you? Thank Hi you everyone, for, uh, how you doing? <laughs> good, good to see you. Awesome, Janera. Uh, yes, thank you for co-hosting with me, Chanera, and thank you for joining us, uh, everyone, today. Today, we are honored uh, to welcome character designer, illustrator, show creator, a children's book illustrator, and the always inspiring Sandra Ekiwa. Um, oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is going to be a fun one, because for this panel, we're going to be talking about incorporating your heritage um your culture in your work whether that's going to be story or design or animation or lighting or production or anything like that and uh we will try to answer a lot of your questions uh uh towards the end and um i think our only disclaimer that we have is that there might be spoilers for anything that sandra had worked on that includes mind three book of life if you haven't seen any of those um El Tigre, um, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, to give Sandra free reign to talk about all that kind of stuff, we'll just be talking about like the story stuff. By the way, I will say, you have Netflix, check out Mind in the Three now. It was one of my favorite things of two, two, uh, like 2021, where are we, Sandra? What year is it? Uh, oh God, right now it's 2022, but it, I think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh amazing 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 and I have high standards in, both in terms of like visuals and kind of like what I kind of watch on streaming but um I I love my in the three and what an accomplishment and congratulations on that too holy moly amazing amazing oh. stuff. so um but yeah this is going to be fun um and Sandra so we'll we'll kind of kick it off to you um would you mind telling uh, the audience a little bit about yourself and kind of like a brief uh, career bio of what you've been up to up until, up until, up until birth? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but. yeah. Yeah, well, first of all, Bobby Chinera, thank you so much for reaching out to me. Um, for those who are hearing, it was really, really difficult to say yes to this because I, believe it or not, I'm actually kind of shy when it comes to doing this kind of stuff because Jorge, as you know, or those who don't know, my husband is is a piñata of, and he explodes and he's just very like extroverted and he's just a firecracker. So it's very hard to like be a firecracker next to him, but he lets me shine as well. And that's why I love him. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's it, thank you so much, you guys, for for having me on and uh, and uh, for persisting, Bobby, because Bobby was the one that was like, "Come on, man, let's do it," and I was like, "Okay." And this, I think, this is the first time we've actually spoken, Bobby. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, I think I've met you At a couple all. of times, but just hi. Yeah. And Jorge would be like, "That's Bobby," you know, and I'd be like, <laughs> "Oh my God, that's Bobby." <laughs> Yeah, and I'd be like, one day I'll meet him, and now here I am. So, yeah, and then Chinera, dude. Don't forget about me, okay, Chinera? When you're like up there in your pedestal. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, where do I begin? So, I was born in Tijuana, a little city down towards the south, uh, right in the entrance of Mexico, as they call it, the, the gates to, the, to, the, to Mexico, right? Um, <clears throat> born and raised really close to the border. Like I'd say hop, skip and a jump. My father was a doctor. So he actually like birthed me. Like he, my mom birthed me, he received me. He was like the, at the receiving end. Like he was the first one to see my face. So um, yeah, wow. it was really, That's really amazing. Cool. I know, right? How many people <laughs> get that opportunity? Wow. <laughs> and we were four girls, so we got to see all of them. Yeah. So I have three other sisters. Hi, Carla, if you're watching. And uh, um, yeah. Carla's married to Gabe Swar. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So she, oh, he's my brother in law. Isn't that crazy? Oh, nice. Yeah. Hi, okay. Gabe, if you're watching. So, anyway, yeah. And, um, I was born in Tijuana, born and raised. But uh, like a lot of kids, you know, like what their parents want, if we have that, we were lucky enough to have this opportunity. We are taken across the border to San Diego and we are take we are put into schools be it the majority of the times they're catholic because they're private and 
it's it's a faster entryway into them. So I got to learn English. I got to learn about that's most more more so the reason why you're put there. So you can learn to be bilingual. So you can learn the the history of someone being so close to you because we're like sister cities technically. Tijuana and San Diego, despite Diego. that there's a border. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you would know, right? So anyway, um, uh, I I made a lot of friends. I learned a lot of things. And then like right as I was at the cusp of like hormone city and like. <sighs> boyfriends and and like all its stuff and in eighth grade because my school only went to eighth grade I went from kindergarten to eighth grade and then bye well the rule was almost always your parents would yank you out of there and they would throw you into Tijuana to a school and you'd be like oh my god like what am I gonna do now like I speak Spanish but I don't speak it as fluently as I should you know and I don't know the history very well I'm going into ninth grade and I don't know anything about like anything, right? So they throw you into the school and you're like, like you, you come from like a nice Catholic background and everything. You come into the school and I swear it was like being thrown into a mosh pit. It was insane. Like the school they threw me into, like it was out of control. Like kids were literally like the, the we were on the fourth floor of my school because we were the, the, the school that they put me into, it was going into ninth grade. And that was the last one, the last grade that, that was at the school. And as it goes, the last floor of my building was brand new. It was fresh. Like they were barely constructing it. So there were no windows. And the door was made out of one of those like fakey doors that you get like the temporary ones. And it was yeah. freezing. And the guys would break desks and they would throw pieces of desks across the way because there was a house on the other end that had a swimming pool so they would play during recess they would like throw pe- it was just a mess and I and like, here I am coming from this very like oh place and then like coming to this mosh pit of craziness I'm like, oh my God, what did you do ask me what I learned in ninth grade I don't remember I do not remember I mean, fortunately this is this is, has to do a little bit with my heritage Thank God my mom and my dad were always very proud of the heritage they came from. Yeah. They are from a place called Michoacan, which is way further down south in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And it's a region known as Purepecha region, which is like very indigenous. Mm-hmm. It used to be more indigenous. It's now a lot more modernized because of technology, because of the internet. And mm-hmm. in a way, it's kind of sad because a lot of those traditions are beginning to be more modernized. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the artisanal feel of it is beginning to disappear. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people that are of my generation or or even higher, like older people that are trying to keep that feeling of authenticity going. But these new generations are coming and they're going fabricate it faster, make it faster. You know, don't take your don't take your time, like imported uh, fabrics, things that are already printed. Don't uh, take the time to like meticulously sew. So anyway. My mom and my dad, uh, they would take us down there every, like every once in a while to see where they were from, to see uh, the labor that went into all these things. And as a kid, you're like, yeah, sure, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But the older you grow, you begin to see exactly what you were learning when you were little. And you learn to integrate it into your work, which is I, what I feel like I've mm-hmm. begun to do now. Mm-hmm. So anyway... Right. If I, and then the next thing I want to say is when I was little, a lot of people ask if I drew when I was little, <clears throat> I'd have to say I wasn't that much of an artist because I had another sister who was above me. So I'm the third in line. I'm the sandwich child. Mm-hmm. And she was amazing. Like my sister, Gabby, her name was Gabby. Really? Yeah. She was fantastic. Like she could do anything. She was like, now that I think about it, she was like my mentor and like, oh, Gabby's so cool. Like she has fashion. She has, she listens to 91X, you know, like I want to listen to 91X. Oh my gosh. She's listening to Susie and the Banshees. I want to listen to that. Oh my God. Dude, cool. Oh my gosh. She chopped off her hair. I think this is an homage to my sister. She chopped off her hair. I want to do that. Oh my gosh. She's wearing something that looks like creepers. I want to wear creepers too. Unfortunately, I didn't go there because I was wearing hand-me-downs. So I was wearing a lot of like handmade dresses. Mm-hmm. And like I was wearing a lot of stuff that they wore that was handed mm-hmm. down to me. So I was wearing a lot of ruffles until sixth grade. 
<laughs> so bad. <laughs> That's when I was yeah. like, as God as yeah. my witness, I raised my tiny fist. I yeah. will yeah. pick my own yeah. clothes one day. So anyway, <laughs> she was like my idol, right? And she also drew. And she would help me do these um, covers for my book reports. And she would always draw them for me. And I'd color them in to take some credit for it, right? Mm -hmm. And then one day she had had it and she said, dude, I'm not doing this for you anymore. I got my own homework to do. You figure it out, oh, whatever. No. <laughs> I later days. So I was like, oh, she's not gonna help me anymore. And I had done a report, a very meticulous report on dogs. And I remember it was like third grade. And I grabbed a book and I started drawing it. Like I started copying it to the best of my abilities, which is what I think a lot of us do when we're younger, when we start to draw, we start copying things that we like. Mm -hmm. And it was a book that I really love called uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not for Kids. I still oh, remember. I don't uh, know if you remember. And it was like, oh my God, I got to copy that dog. So I copied it. And then I got a hundred and they complimented the book cover. And I was like, oh yeah, man, that was me. That was me. That was my <laughs> sister. That was in Gabby. Take that, Gabby. And so I started drawing my own things and I started having a little more confidence in my art, right? So I kept going and going and going and going. And I wound up like every year getting, uh, I don't know if you guys did this, but they would have award ceremonies. And this helps kids a lot. I mean, awards really do mean something, at least to me, they did. And to my parents, right? We would always get art. I would always get art, art, art. I was up against another guy called Javon and that guy was badass. Sorry, can I say that? He was badass. He was so good. <laughs> But later on, if he's listening, he was taking classes. So whatever, Javon, <laughs> I wasn't doing, I was like <laughs> artisanal. I was doing it on my own. So anyway, time passes by and I keep drawing. Like I begin to figure out that I really like drawing, 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 drawing. And this passion lasted until I was like in high school. And that's when I met Jorge. Somewhere along the way, I met this crazy guy with this triangular afro <laughs> because he didn't he has curly hair I mean right now he has curly short hair but before when I met him his hair that would grow out and then it would go full like it was like an arrow <laughs> and and he had like fluorescent orange pants and he was crazy and he had these like all these alternative ideas and my parents did not like him because he had all these alternative ideas because we oh, came no. from oh, <laughs> and he was like yeah man punk rock whatever the system <laughs> and yeah and he was like and my mom was like this isn't gonna last you know like it's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah like yeah. and they would corner him and they would ask him about jesus and he'd be like dude i am not having this because i'm not <laughs> here to talk about jesus i'm here to hang out with you and dude yeah, can, you can just imagine him, right? So I was like, oh God. But anyway, when we when we did get to go out, we would just like eat pizza and we would talk about design and we would talk about characters and all. And this was before he went to CalArts because he went to CalArts. He had like a vision. I'm going to CalArts. Damn it, I'm going to CalArts. I'm going to get in. And he did get in, okay? He was so, like he he's the type of guy that will throw like fairy dust out into the universe and he will be like fairy dust you know like make a line for a beeline for my goal and damn it it'll go there and I'll be like fairy dust go wherever you may and I won't go anywhere because I'm just everywhere and that's where I was I didn't know where I was gonna go because I was like god where where am I going because in Tijuana I mean it was this was pre-computer pre-internet I mean man, I'm old. Now that you think about it, because it wasn't in the internet, right? Like that you still, you had to go to the Chula Vista Public Library, which I love. I mean, that was like, give me any day and I would spend a day in the public library. I loved it. I love looking at comics. I love looking at science books. I love looking at anything. And that was my influence to draw just stories. I loved reading. I still love reading and uh, just get the imagination going. Right. So I heard of graphic design because prior to that, I was like, I guess I'm going into architecture. That's the only <laughs> thing that has drawing, you know? And then prior to that, I had got, I remember I got braces and I was like, I think I want to be an orthodontist. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Cause I saw my dad and he was a doctor. My sister, my first sister, Adriana was a doctor. My second sister was a doctor. I was like, I don't know where I'm going to be. And then my youngest sister studied veterinary, right? So they were all kind of Carla wasn't like in the same field, but she was 
you know, like they kind of were like, yes, let's talk about the differences. At least they could relate in some way. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, I guess I'll be an orthodontist. <laughs> so, and then I was like, oh, there's architecture. And then I did architecture as like, a, um, I don't know if they have this in the United States where you can choose like an alternative to what you want to be in the future. Like they test you almost like those Tibetan like monks or, or is it like Chinese? Yes, it's Chinese, I apologize. Um, where they do a tradition where they, they choose like money and they choose like a pencil and they choose something else, you know, like very similar to that where they go choose and the child chooses and they go, oh, he chose money, you know, he wants to study banking or he wants to study whatever. This is very similar <laughs> in my school where they were like, what would you like to study, you know? And I would be like, okay. And the only options they give you, there are like five of them. And one of them was architecture because the other one was communications, which I was very embarrassed about because I am I was like as extroverted and as I may seem, again, I'm very shy. And uh, the other one was orthodontist. <laughs> <laughs> it was just chasing me you yeah. know and yeah. the other one was architecture and I don't remember the other two. Oh, engineering and I was like I guess I'll do architecture but it has so much math you know yeah and my teachers <laughs> hated me hated me because all I would do was draw like little characters I would draw my friends I would draw like guys obviously like ooh, like guy look at that cute guy look I want to go out with and like guys guys you know like and then I met Jorge with the triangle hair and I started drawing him instead so all of my like like my 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 uh blueprints had like little drawings of Jorge on the side and like ah. oh remember and then I would do the, I would do the oh because I love I'm from a graphic design background so already there my my graphic design things are showing up with fonts so because I would draw like Jorge and Sandra like in cholo fonts and like it was just like <laughs> Yeah, so like all like some of that was showing through, and then like Jorge was like, "All right, lady, I'm out of here. I'm going to Cal Arts." And then I was like, buh, 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 buh. "I guess I, I don't know what I want." <laughs> and then I was like, introduced to graphic design by a friend of Gabby, the the my sister who didn't draw my my cover for my for my book report in third grade, and she was like, "Hey, Sandra, I got this friend who says he's studying something called graphic design." It's fairly new in Tijuana, but if you want to, you can go ahead and like talk to him. And I was like, okay, cool. So I talked to him and I, here I am, this tiny little like pimply girl. She's like, hi, what's, what's graphic design? And he gave me like a stack of communication arts and he gave me uh, some amazing magazines. Like now you can see it online and everything, which is cool. But back then it was just the magazines and each magazine was like $40, which to me was like, oh my God, like, where am I going to get $40 from, you know, like, am I going to have to sell it? <laughs> right. And, yeah. So I was like amazed. It was just like a completely different world because he gave me, I specifically remember he gave me one for illustration. He gave me another one for poster design. And he gave me, those are the main ones that I remember. And I was like, this is it. I got to do it. Wow. So unfortunately, the school that I wanted to go to was like on the other side of Tijuana, like literally no man's land. Like this place is called Playa de Tijuana. It's now a little more like there's more people there and the people are really chill because it's a beach place. So nice. And it's really interesting because the border that separates the United States with Tijuana. Yeah. You can you can actually touch it. You can see it and it goes into the water. Oh, it's fascinating. Like it, it, it blows your mind because you're like, how is it possible yeah. that a, a metallic piece is just yeah. separating these two pieces of land? Right. And it was so funky because I remember back then, I don't know if you could still do it. It's been a while since I've actually gone down to the beachfront. You could stick your hand through and you can reach your hand out to another person because there wasn't immigration. There weren't any immigration officers there. Now there's more, there's more security, but before you could and it was rusted and crusty and yeah like it was amazing so that was like an eye-opener to oh my god where am I living you yeah. know I knew that I lived in Tijuana but look at this look at the culture that's across the way look at us look at what's separating it's it's a hair it's a hair so anyway I went into university and I started studying graphic design and I was very fortunate to like dip my toes into a medley of things like industrial design I did uh uh, airbrushing 
which is, <laughs> oh my god airbrushing so for those who only know airbrushing by photoshop try, <laughs> yeah or i mean it's a lot of fun but it's expensive yeah, 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 and it's a pain in the butt because you have yeah. to keep on cleaning that little gun, yeah. and like yeah. it's like, oh god, I broke it, you know, like it's, <laughs> everything is so delicate, like the, the rapidographs because we would have to do it with rapidographs, and they were pens that you would have to put the ink in, and then you had to like mm, put it in yeah, there, yeah. and if yeah. you weren't, if you I didn't had that well enough, yeah, they're beautiful pens, but if you didn't do it, it would go. Bleh like that like if you didn't yeah. clean the tip of your pen it would bleed yeah. out and you'd yeah. be like, oh! yeah. I like this, man. yes I made it this. would be so yeah. horrible and oh mm. my god so anyway those were the i guess what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right so sure. yeah you learn from these experiences we did photography we did uh theory like we did everything in it so and there were some teachers there that were way more compassionate to me because they were like where is this child going like yeah. they, <laughs> <laughs> others were like yeah man when I get out of here I'm going to do like industrial design and whatever like obviously not in the beginning in the beginning everybody comes out like out of the womb like where am I you yeah, know yeah, and then yeah. like later on they're like this is the path I'm going to take this is what yeah. I'm going to do and yeah. then there's some that are just like I guess this isn't for me I'm going to go into something else you know yeah. and then, mid way and that's valid completely because you can't like yeah. me dude i wanted to be an orthodontist come on now so yeah. um uh an orthodontist slash architect right no orthodontist slash architect slash graphic designer slash uh yeah, yeah like <laughs> i wanted <laughs> you believe it uh, i should attach a yeah. tattoo artist yeah yeah. so anyway yeah, um, slash artist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, Sandra, let's let's start to um, if you want, we yes. can start to pivot into and uh, your your kind of career into finding art and or, sorry uh, animation, and yeah. then we can go ahead and with your presentation, which, yeah, yeah, yes. that'd be okay. awesome. because that's perfect. It was about to go into that anyway. Okay, cool. So after the orthodontist uh, uh, career, yes. Okay. After my, can you see it? Can you see the presentation? Uh, not yet. Hit some, um, hit the, the screen. screen bottom bit. There you go. All right, here we go. All right, man. All right, here we go. Here we so, go. Uh, hello to everyone again. And so when we started with Jorge, because that's when we started, we, we, one of the things that I've been very fortunate to do is to work alongside Jorge because we've always worked together. Mm -hmm. I mean, at, even at, even when we were young, as you heard right now, like we've always exchanged ideas, exchanged, like, and it's, it hasn't always been a walk like, in, down like a happy road. Like there's a lot of fights. There's a lot of like, everyone's always asking us, how do you do it to work with your significant other? It's uh, not all peaches and cream, like, but that's part of it. You know, like when you're working with someone and you guys both have really big ideas, fights are inedible and that's what's gonna make the project even better, I believe. Um, so anyway, one of the first projects that we did, let me see if I can do this. Okay, yeah, was El Tigre, right? That's one of the first projects that we did together. And uh, Jorge came to me and he was like, dude, I really have this really cool idea about this little boy. And uh, he's gonna be living with his uh, dad and his grandfather and they're kind of based on me and whatever. And I was like, mm -hmm. all right, okay, well, what do you want me to do? And he was like, well, I really want you to come up with someone that can, these are three men. I need you to, to come up with a character that'll counterbalance this heavy load. So with one character, you have to be able to balance those three heavy personalities. Like she has to be strong enough to be able to like go, go up in their faces, right? So um, I kind of drew and I messed around and I came up with Frida. And Frida's kind of based on me. She's kind of like when I'm in front of Jorge, I'm completely crazy. In front of my friends, I'm completely crazy. Yeah. Something's telling me that I'm not very introverted. All right, am I? <laughs> so anyway, she's like, like Manny's like, dude, I'll back you up. I'll back you up with anything. Like if you want to go down there and you want to make an explosion, I'll totally back you up. And now <laughs> it's, it's, it's like so funny because it's geared from Jorge. Now it's geared down to my kid. And yeah. my kid is very much about electrocution right now. And he's very much <laughs> about explosives. And he's very much about mom, what'll happen if you know, like if, if we stick our heads out through the car wash, 
what'll happen or if I, yeah. So we, we haven't done that yet, but we might do something interesting with it one day. Uh, so we, yeah, <laughs> like we'll back them up because I'm curious too, you know, and I'm in for it. So it was a lot of fun. And uh, as you can see, like our style was still kind of beginning to like, we were trying to figure out how to make our, our styles work together. And this is where I really feel like we cemented it. Like it began to feel not the same because there's always going to be a difference. You're going to be able to tell who did what, but it works, you know? Man. So I kept going, yeah. yeah, like lots of stuff. A lot of fun. Jorge's pace is fast. He's really yeah. like, now I need this. Now I need that. No, whatever. And it, it will never be, he'll be like, nothing normal he'll be like no i need a fat person with with like a, a, a like a snaggly teeth and she has like three heads and <laughs> she's a dinosaur and i'll be like oh, Jesus, Mary joseph Jesus. i can only work so fast you know so keep going <laughs> <laughs> and keep going yeah so that was a lot of fun and then along the way you know like after some time we got uh shelved which I was I did not take well but Jorge did because he's a good boy and I'm not I'm a little more like Frida I got very mad so I did a an art show specifically targeted at how angry I was in San Diego oh. somewhere where the executives couldn't find me so I did it down in San Diego but yeah. I was really mad but yeah. then Jorge was like dude why aren't you just like take that anger and just like project it in another direction and, and grow with it and I was like okay fine yeah. So um, along the way, as everyone knows, like you get like these extracurricular, extra projects, right? And that allows you to grow, I think. Um, so one of the ones that I got, I was lucky enough to be called by Hasbro. And Hasbro was like, hey, we're doing, that's when they were beginning to come out with like all these toys, My Little Pony and all this stuff. And they said, we want to do something with Gem and the Holograms. And for those who don't know, Man, Gem and the Holograms. That <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Gem and the Holograms was this like amazing show that came out in, I guess I was like, 80s. yeah, I, I think I was like 11, 10, probably when it came out. And it was one of the few shows kind of geared to girls. And it was kind of cool. Although I leaned more towards He-Man than, than Gem. But I thought that, you know what, like, wow, like there's punk rockers in this show and my sister's kind of badass. So like, uh, like there's something here and I kind of like the aesthetic. So I, I, I was really excited when they asked me to do it, the take. And I did the Misfits as well. And um, like many projects that kind of start and, and they get really excited for some reason, X, Y, and Z, it didn't go through. But that's okay, dude, because I gained experience. I got something for my, my portfolio and it was a lot of fun. And I started ex like, like experimenting with different styles. Yeah. yeah. So that's Synergy. Right. Instead of having Synergy being a full grown hologram, she was in my, in my idea, she was going to be like a flame, like a tiny little flame that would come Thank off, you. And, you know, like a wisp. That's good. Cool. Thank you. So then, um, then I got pregnant. <laughs> and during my pregnancy Jorge was like that's not gonna stop us and I was like it isn't <laughs> and he was like no damn it we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do a project for Disney it's gonna be called it's gonna be called Carmen gets its spell and it's gonna be based on when you used to go to that crazy school where they used to throw the the desks into the pool and it was crazy times and whatever and I was like god I don't think I can do it here I was like big stomach and he was like dude and you know what to make it even cooler it's all going to be your style not mine and I was like god now's not the time Jorge but you know what like I was like okay fine I'll take it on I'll bring it I'll back you up Frida style you know like until Tigger I'll do it ah, let me catch my breath so I started drawing and this is what we came up with it was about a girl who went to a Catholic school and she had a certain amount of days I think that's what it, what it was Jorge's going to kill me what it was about. Um, uh, she had a certain amount of days before she got kicked out of her school. So every day it was about uh, an episode about what she had to do in order to stay in the school before she got kicked out again. And obviously Disney did not like that idea. <laughs> She's like, we don't like anything. We don't like anything with the word expelled. So <laughs> they said Aww. no. Yeah, so this was the villain. Her name was Yvonne. And then this was like the principal and the story was about a uh, mascot and his name was Hamlet. So I had to do a turn for, uh, for that too. And then, uh, so that one didn't go through either. 
and All right, we were like uh, really, okay with it. Real, real quick, Sandra, were that artwork that you did was that to get it um, made a pitch to get it made, or was it um, it was kind of like on the green light side, and you guys are starting to do production? Um, if you we don't mind, did, we did that as the Bible. Oh, got it. Okay. That was the presentation for the Bible. And then they were like, dude, we're for it. We're going to consider the name. You know, we kind of like it. It's kind of fun and all that. But um, come up with a story, an idea, you know, an got idea it. of what the, the idea, what the show is going to be about. So got we it. had to pitch. It was a pitch Bible. And they were like, dude, yeah, we're, we're totally going to do it. We actually did a, an animatic for it. Mm. We had like a composer, Pilar from uh, Los Abandoned. Mm -hmm. did a song for us and it was so cool man it was so punk rock and uh in the end i think we got creamed by another project i see because okay. they used to set up you they set you up against like others to see what's what's um what gravitates more in the moment of what's happening that's the scary part about pitching you know you kind of have to be in touch with what's going on yep and uh um we liked what we had going and we were being true to our, to our vision. Um, I think that if you kind of pitch that now, mm -hmm. it would kind of fly a little better. Mm -hmm. But back then it was just, they, I think they were pitching things out that were a little more. And I think the idea of something getting expelled and, and her being punk rock and an episode a, a day of somebody getting kicked out and, and her feeling the anxiety and fear that she has to, be good in order to stay in school. I think it didn't fly. I see. I don't blame them, you know, but it was a lot of fun. And the executives were great. They were, they were like, dude, you know, keep going. And we were like, don't worry, we will. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Proceed, proceed. So, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, somewhere along the way, we got a call for the go and they were like, hey, we're doing a spin, a, a, a kind of like a spin off of The Wizard of Oz. Los Guardianes de Oz technically means the Guardians of Oz. And they said, we would like it if you guys could take a stab at our script and look at the characters and see if you could come up with some ideas for it. And, and we'd love to use them. And we're like, okay. So in this version, the, the fairy, the Glenda, which this is Glenda, by the way she played the part of a villain. So we made her temperamental. We made her like, like, like goody two shoes, prom queen, frat girl. And I turned this in. Oh my And God. this was, the, this was the Wicked Witch of the West, but she was little and her name was, uh, I think her name was Gabby, G-A-B-B-Y. Mm -hmm. And then Dorothy actually was it's so funny because Dorothy was kind of like a side character. So we had to make her really bland. <laughs> Not so bland that she would like so do you see what i mean like the other two characters have more color they're more poppy and they're like more extroverted they have more to them and she's like she does have the poppy color and all that in it but she's she's one noted so that's exactly what they were going for mm -hmm. they did the project and i want to thank them for the opportunity um then and then came one of the coolest projects i've ever had the opportunity to work in and uh in this one this was huge in every sense of the way it was a, like you know how literally there's a book everybody has a book of their life i mean no no pun intended but the chapter in this in my life for this one was huge because we had to move to dallas we moved to dallas to make this as everyone knows and it was a man like we grew so much as people. We met so many cool people in Dallas. Like, we miss it. Honestly, like, there's not a day that goes by that I'm like, I wonder what's going on with that person. Or, oh, my God, the food. Or, like, remember that street? And, oh, my God, the food. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, the food. You know, it's so good. Like, everything there is so delicious. But mm -hmm. the people in itself were very warm, you know. And, and it was so cool because the, the, the studio we were at was small. So I, Jorge decided to take this precious project um, because he did pitch it around here in LA, but the, but the, I mean, the houses here are so huge. He didn't want to take his little precious gem and, and have it just like put in any place. Mm -hmm. So he figured, you know what, I'm going to take this um, gem and put it in a small studio where I can 
have people with me, my army, and I know everybody and the executives know me and everything. And it couldn't have worked out better. I mean, we made really good friends. We discovered amazing talent. Uh, they let us into their lives. We let them into ours. We felt like we formed a really tight family. And I think that's one of the important things about working with a team. I don't get tired of saying it. If you have good chemistry in a team, it shows, you know, in, in the project or else, man, you're really good at hiding problems in your, in your production. But this one, man, like we had the creme of the creme. Like they, they were, it was an honor working alongside them. So um, there were a lot of influences. Like when we're going, we were talking about influences with Bobby and how our culture influences um, our work. And one of the influences that came of this was like, we really went into our Mexican roots for this. And as anyone knows, what Adel, I don't know if you guys know what Adelitas are. Jorge was like, I want you to start looking at Adelitas for these two skull girls that I, that I, that I, uh, I want you to design. And I was like, okay, so Adelitas are technically women that fought alongside um, revolutionary men in the Mexican revolution. Like they had no fear. They went in there, they shot their guns. They would like back up their men with like bullets and whatever they needed. Like they rode to war and I'll take care of the kids, but there was also, I'm going to war and I'm gonna fight alongside my men. So he said, look at those. And that's how Scardalitas came about. And uh, I'd also like to thank um, um, uh, Jerry uh, for helping us put some color on this and help us helping us out with this. And then this is Manola's mom. And we took a little, we did a little tip of the hat to traditional dresses. And um, <laughs> Jorge's obsessed with this actress called uh, Tongolele. She was like this exotic dancer, very tiki, like, oh, la, la. and he loved her because of that white wisp she has. Mm -hmm. And then like he said, I also want you to tap in, into what my mom is. And man, if, if you went into the dictionary and you looked in for Mexican mom, you would find Jorge's mom because man, she can do it all. She can do like the cooking. I am put to shame. I've never cooked for her because her cooking is so good. I'm embarrassed. I'm like, like oh, I don't want don't look at my chicken, please. You'll, you, no, please. Don't look at my pozole. Like, please don't look at my yeah, pozole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Okay. Yeah, so she, he, this was our inspiration for the mother. Nice. And then uh, this is Maria. And Maria uh, was inspired by an actress that Jorge really loves called Claudia Cardinal. And he said, although she's not Mexican, I wish she was, <laughs> but... She's very innocent and she's a very strong character in, in the films and we want to portray that into our character. So we messed around with that. And then that's a picture of me and my grandma up here. And, and that's my grandma. And my mom, my grandma was very like, always kept to herself. She was very solemn. She was very, she was sweet in her own way. Like she expressed her own, like she was always knitting. From what I remember, she was always knitting. She was, she would make, that's how she would express her love to us from what I remember. And my sister Carla would, would agree. She would make tiny little intricate doll dresses and shoes for our Barbies. And, uh, or rather Barbie, because we only had one. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'll explain that later. But anyway, um, I decided to base it on her and her dress, her way of dressing her solemn face, like in the movie, she hardly ever smiles, so. <laughs> and then we had like La Muerte, who had to have the same colors as La Muerte when she's actually the, the goddess. And this was the initial concept for, for La Muerte when yeah, we started yeah. doodling. This is what Jorge and I do when we go to coffee shops or restaurants yeah. and we would be drawing to see what yeah. we need. And she said, I want you to base it on those high class ladies that used to live in the Porfiriato era. And Porfiriato, here's a quick lesson, was a, a time in Mexico where there was a, a president called Porfirio Diaz. And this man was like, I am going to try and make Mexico as European as possible. And that includes fashion, that includes uh, style, that includes um, design. And so if you go to Mexico, Mexico, you can actually see like nouveau styles Nouveau neighborhoods, mm -hmm. you could see like the wrought iron that looks like nature. And a lot of that was influenced on these women who were very regal and very like upper class crusty women 
-hmm. And um, Posada, as you can tell right here, started integrating them into his murals. Mm. Posada mm. being one of the most uh, renowned, um, not Posada, sorry, that's Diego Rivera. Diego Rivera integrated them into a lot of his um, paintings. And um, I'll explain a lot more about that later on, but Mexico likes to play around a lot with, with death. And this was Diego Rivera's way of doing it. <clears throat> so eventually we came up with this idea Amazing. and um, cool. it was a lot of fun, like trying to nail down the look of it. Cause this is how we work. First we do it like flat and we figure out what she's gonna look like with color and everything. And then we actually have it modeled and made it th into a 3D maquette and, and see what it's gonna look like. So figuring out the flowers, the texture of the flowers, the feathers, what it's gonna move like, the hat, the hat, man. I'll say it again, like hats off to the uh, storyboard artists for starters, because nobody gives them credit because they're the ones that were like, well, we're gonna have to cheat like a lot of things because her hat is so big. If we put someone next to him, they're either gonna have to stand really far away or they're gonna have to stand really close underneath it. And that's how they started to cheat it. You know, there's lots, lots of little fun things that you don't notice because movies go by so fast. So, so, fast. so the, the, the right, sorry, really quickly, uh, Sandra. So the uh, screen right was the CG model. Yes. And then this was your, uh, your initial design. That's one yes. thing is a theme as I go through your, um, your slide presentation is how closely the essence of like the 2D design was captured in 3D. Remarkable. I, think, I, I mean, think, it's not an easy bit, right? No, no, it's not. Not only, especially with Jorge. <laughs> because he's like, I'm going to put a skull on top of a skull on top of a skull on top of a skull. And I, I saw him. I saw, I saw that he's in the attendee room in the chat. And oh, I, when, you, I, when you said that, I was like, I can imagine. Anyway, oh go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. And, Sorry. And, Sorry. And, Sorry. It's so funny because we actually had some people on the, on the project when we were doing this. And there's some... Um, side characters that we had and they were like how are we supposed to turn this because their the nose was like going sideways completely and the two nostrils were exactly on the front mm -hmm. and her hair was like ah, i'll figure it out and they actually did and they looked so good they looked like picasso right. paintings you know they yes, were so that's good what I thought of. Yeah, very yeah. cubist yeah yeah so the other thing is that we like to say with jorge is that you got to respect the style of the designer you know so many times it happens that like you, the, we see so much amazing artwork done and we get so excited because we think that like the project's going to look like that and then we see it in the end and we're like that mm -hmm. looked really good but man what happened to the other stuff mm -hmm. you know what happened to the mm -hmm. original hair or the original I don't know what it was wearing or, or so forth so we make we that's another reason we really like working with the small studio because we were hands-on we were like no dude we're not going to change that for you know animation sake we're going to try and work with it and see if this flows well so thank you for looking at that bobby i appreciate yeah, it of course yeah. yeah so the next thing that i worked on again like i was saying a while ago in between projects um we get the chance to work with other things so simon and schuster reached out and said hey we're doing these little series of books for kids uh called once upon a world and they would ask different artists from the same heritage they were basing the book on. So they did one for, I think, Japan. I think they did one for China. Mm -hmm. And they called me from Mexico. And I was like, dude, I'd love to do it. What do you want me to do? And they were like, we want you to do your take on Cinderella. And I was like, oh my God, I would love to do that. Like, oh <laughs> like so I, there I am just like, yeah, my, yeah. Time, my time to shine has come, right? So I was like yeah. so excited. Because in my head, I had already started seeing everything. Like I, like a good designer, you already start like, we like to say like beautiful mind, you know, you'll start seeing the numbers and everything. You're like, <laughs> and you're like, yes, that's exactly how I'm going to do it. Yeah. So the first thing that you had to figure out was like, what is Cinderella going to look like, right? So there I am again, here I am right here. And as I mentioned uh, on the left-hand corner, uh, my family's from Michoacan. It's uh, Urepecha and very proud of it. And one of the things that really, that, that, that is very traditional is las guaris or las iguiris. And these are women that are purepecha that dress a certain way. And when there's like, to me, it seems like they do it more when it's like a, a feast or a holiday or something. They tend to dress up with bright colored bows and like beautiful 
rebosos, which are the shawls and they wear bright colors. And I was like, dude, that would be so cool if we could base, take that aesthetic and put it into the fairy godmother, mm -hmm. which is right here. Mm -hmm. She's the fairy godmother. So the fairy godmother later on, here's a spoiler, I used her model uh, because Jorge liked her so much and said, could you go off of her to do a push for Maya and the three? So I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, dude, I totally love the idea. So we'll go back to that in a little bit. But anyway, I did that. And then um, for those who have gone to Mexico, I mean, our, we have no shame with color. Like we, really, <laughs> we, we will put it anywhere, dude, like wherever you want it. Like if you go to like a muffler shops, like to fix your mufflers, they will paint like, like robot muffler men and like yellow and blues. And like, they have no shame. They put silver next to like mint green and it looks amazing. <laughs> It looks so good. Things that you would never think would work. You're like, oh, I got to take a picture of that yeah. so I can use it as reference. So if you go down to Mexico, one of the coolest things that you're going to see there is the architecture. And a lot of the times, specifically in Pueblos, Oaxaca, I'd say it's because, and I'm going to tell you why I have this theory, they use very bright colors and it, it just makes things so, so much more beautiful. And it talks more about the culture and about the people. And I decided to integrate that into the book as well. So Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella is living in this house where it's like brick and it's kind of run down, but at the same time, there's a lot of joy to it because of the colors. There's also a lot of, um, in all of our um, uh, folkloric artwork and ceramics, there's a lot of nature involved, a lot of it. So you're always gonna see flowers and like birds and fauna and flora and, uh, like every time the region does it, every region is different. So they do it in a different way. The, mm -hmm. the dish down there is probably made in a place called Puebla and they're known for Talavera, that kind of, of ceramic. And it's almost always blue. So I decided to bring that element into the, to the aesthetic of the book as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, this dress on the left uh, is a folkloric dance from Veracruz, if I'm not wrong. And I always thought she looked like a princess. Yeah. Like ever since I was little, my mom, that's another thing she would do. She, she, she always wanted to be a dancer, my mom. Mm -hmm. And she actually taught us a couple of steps when we were growing up. So all of us, like we would go down with our cousins and we knew how to, dude, we knew how to dance. So we, <laughs> there, no daughter of mine will not know how to zapatear. So we were down there just dancing and it was crazy. And they were like, how do the hijas, you know, the hijas of Tijero know how to dance? And we're like, because my mom taught us, dude. So yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And um, I, my mom would take us to, uh, my mom took us to a ballet once called Ballet de, de Amalia Hernandez. And it's a beautiful spectacle. If it's ever in, in LA, you guys have to go see it. It's gorgeous. And one of the dances that really caught my attention was this one. And it's the, the footwork is so fast, but the dress is, was gorgeous. And I was thought one day I'm going to draw it somewhere. And I got the opportunity to do it in, in this book as yeah as the princess version of it, right? Yeah, yeah, wonderful. So again, what I was saying about the ceramics is that we're always putting wow. a lot of um, fauna, flora, mm -hmm. religious, we're very, also very known for our religion, right? So a lot of that religious religion goes into our artwork as well. Mm -hmm. The baby Jesus would marry the nativity scenes or you know, the creation of life, which you could see on the right-hand side with that arbol de la vida. What that, mean, what that means is it's a tree of life. So I love these and I've always wanted one, but man, they're so fragile. So if you're going to go to Oaxaca, they are, and some of them are freaking heavy. Some of them are like <laughs> humongous, like they can be as big as like a person yeah, or yeah. they can be tiny and, and delicate, you know, very petite. It depends again on what region you go to. So yeah. I was like, wouldn't it be cool if our fairy godmother had hair like a, like a, like a tree of life. Oh yeah. Whoa. So I was like, that would be so awesome. So I was like, all right, we're gonna do that. So I did that, and then it translated to a push later on, which is perfect because she is the god of gods, right? Uh -huh. She is, she is like uh, Pachamama or or you know Mother Nature or whatever you want to call her. She has many names. Mm -hmm. So um, again, another project that came uh, in between projects. Because mm -hmm. you never stop. You can't stop, right? When you're in the industry, you all, you can't be like, okay, we're done with that one. It's not like a race where you're like done. Yeah. And then, and then you like kind of, yeah, no, you have to keep yeah. training. You have to keep going. 
And then you go on to the next project. While you're working on those projects, you're working on the other projects. You do not stop, right? So uh, we were fortunate enough, my, the Jorge and I, to work on Netflix, thanks to Chris Nee. Chris Nee reached out to Jorge. Jorge was like, dude, you're in this with me, ride or die. So I was like, okay, let's do this. So he was like, um, the point of this um, project was uh, to focus on immigration. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to talk about a different um, races and different traditions and different uh, people from different parts of the world coming to America and mm -hmm. forming part of the United States. Unfortunately, you can't see it on YouTube. There's only three projects that, that are seen there, but you can see it on Netflix. So if you guys want to see the entire thing, hats off to us, on honestly. It I think it came out really, really nice. It came out fun. It was very sweet. Very and sweet. you can't take credit only for the designs. The backgrounds were incredible. Todd Polson did a great design helping us out. Um, the animation studio that helped us out was great. Shout out to them. Um, and we couldn't have done it. I mean, we're a team. You can't take the whole credit for it. And it was a lot of fun doing it. So that's kind of what it looked like in the end. Yeah. And they would be walking towards us. Jorge did the storyboarding, uh, a lot of the storyboarding for us. Yeah. yeah. So originally we were supposed to have Sofia Vergara in it. I don't remember if they took the name down or not because we were going to get in trouble. <laughs> it was wishy-washy. I don't remember if it happened or didn't. Yeah. But we did that. I mean, yeah. Armenia was in it too. Yeah. Ecuador. Spain. And then it happened. Uh, so then we got into Maya and the three, right? So, yeah. oh my goodness, this was pandemic city. So, <laughs> in more ways than even, one. Yeah. Yeah, oh my God, it was like, if, if Book of Life was like monumental, this was like testing us. <clears throat> this was testing us hardcore not only Jorge and me the team like but I think in a way it was kind of a godsend and I don't know how many productions can say that but it was so lovely because we got to work from home we did the entire almost all of the production there um I'd say that one of the few problems we had and that was kind of a challenge and we couldn't figure it out so we had to actually go to the place to do it was voice um uh, when we try to do voices for it, um, we tried doing it from the comfort of our own home, which meant going into a closet and putting um, linens and and like blankets and it yeah. still came out horrible. So in yeah. the end, we actually had to go to a booth and sterilize and wear a hazmat outfit and everything. It was just wow. that was the only thing we couldn't do. But everything else, like Jorge was like, hit the ground running, man. And we were just there and everyone was just pulling well and good communication and it, nice. it was fantastic. So really good, a lot of fun. Yeah. And a lot, again, a lot of inspiration, not only with Mexico, but with Latin America this time. We yeah. decided to go all out and give credit to everyone, not only yeah. to where we're from. And that was a lot of fun and a little hard because it was way too much to pick from. I mean, <laughs> If there are country, if there are cities inside of Mexico and inside of cities, there are regions, and if inside of regions there's culture and there's like food and there's aesthetics and there's textiles and ceramics, now imagine all of Latin America. I'm talking Honduras, I'm talking about Peru, I'm talking about Ecuador, I'm talking about all of that, Argentina. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, Jorge asked me to start designing the main character, no stress there which was Maya, right? So I started sketching some things out and I decided to base them on uh, facial features that were Mayan, originally Mayan. And the Mayans have the most beautiful profiles. They, they in their, you could see it in their, in their, uh, I guess you could call them hieroglyphics, or stone carvings. Mm -hmm. uh, you could see it in their, um, profile how their eyes are kind of almond shaped and their noses are well very evident mm -hmm. their lips are very full and I love that you know I wish yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I started doing a lot of research on that and then Jorge said I also want you to do a lot of research on Aztec warriors because we're going to be having her wear that as her armor so I started looking around and Jorge started sending me a lot of, of references and the three that I based myself most on were these three that you see right here. Uh, it's a bust at the upper left, the purple. And then one of Jorge's favorite um, muralists uh, did this piece right here. 
Yeah. Um, it's an Aztec warrior and he's fighting a conquistador. And I don't know if you can tell, but one of them is like uh, the, the eagle warrior is stabbing him with a very primitive, sharp obsidian, um, um, what do you call yeah. it? A lance. Uh huh. And the conquistador is stabbing him with a sword. Mm -hmm. So they're interjecting. And mm -hmm. I think this is the one, please forgive me, Jorge. I think it's called El Abrazo. I think it's called the hug or the embrace. So it's two cultures coming together, which is very strong, right? Hmm. Because from them, we came too. Like we are here now because the Spanish made, like gave us like a lot of last names, a lot of stuff, but we also gave them a lot of stuff as well. And then the last one is uh, an Aztec warrior. It's a very tall sculpture and it's in the Museo de Antropología. And when you see it, you're like, what the what? When you're a little kid, you're like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what she wound up in the end. And again, like what you were saying, um, Bobby, on the left is the conceptual design, which she looks like already colored and what we're going for, trying to make it as clear as possible so that when they go into the maquette, they don't have problems with it, right? Yeah. And- um, Wonderful. Yeah. I think they did a really, really good job. Yeah. Really, wow. very patient. Thank you so much, you know, for, for being so patient to the modelers and mm -hmm. everyone that helped us out with the color. Mm -hmm. And then there was the mom and Jorge was like, okay, you designed Maya. Now you have to draw someone that looks like her mom. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, okay, how am I going to do that? I'm backwards engineering it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go off of the braids again. The ones that I was talking about, Pura Pechas, which I absolutely adore. But now we're going to make her, we're going to go into nature, which is our, you know, like Mexicans do nature very well. And so does all Latin America. We love nature. So I was like, what's very regal? What animal is very regal? And I thought a doe or a deer would be very, very, very regal. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be cool if her hairdo was kind of based on that? You know, nothing says queen and the like elegance, like a, like a very long neck and deer horn. So I based it on a deer. And then somewhere along the way, um, I had heard that George Lucas based Princess Leia's buns on uh, Adelitas or, or revolutionaries. Some of them wore their buns like that. So mm -hmm. forgive me if I'm wrong, but that's what I had read. And I started doing a lot of research and I just found a lot of articles on that. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we combined these two elements and we did buns as well as the, the horns wrapped with the ribbons. And then we also based it on the feeling we got from the actress from Apocalypse Now, the mother who actually gives birth in that hole. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a mother that gives birth in a hole as she's being like, looked at by a by a by a puma or a jaguar and it's yeah. she was so strong and so maternal and so pure mm -hmm. that we decided to go off of her personality mm. cool so here we have some more influences and uh this was for a push which was i was talking about a while ago mm -hmm. who happened to be the fairy godmother in cinderella so we have the the tree of life on the right we have uh old women from from um from mexico we have textiles there is a dance in Michoacán called the Dance of the Old Men, which you could see down here. And it's really whimsical. It's just a bunch of people, men specifically wearing masks and they're really scary. I mean, they're right here. Do you see it right here? Yeah. Um, and, but they're happy. They're always happy because they're happy old men and they're dancing and they dance so beautifully. Like they're zapateado, the, the intricate dance, footwork that they do. They wear, authentically, they wear shoes made out of wood. So it'll clack harder on the floor oh. and they form like a beeline. It's fantastic. If you guys ever have a chance to see it, see it because it's gorgeous. So I decided to base a push's face kind of like on that. Uh -huh. you As you can see right here, um, okay. the influence is, is seen on her hair, yeah. the textile on her, on her shroud she was wearing, what yeah. we were aiming for with her jewelry. That's another thing that we do when we're doing the designs. The texture artists sometimes want us to, to give them ideas of what we have in mind so they can get near to it. Yeah. So we send them ideas like, uh, okay, this is supposed to look like this. This is supposed to look like that. And sometimes it won't be as obvious as this. Sometimes we'll be like, yeah, it's that texture I saw on that bum that lives down the street, you know? Like imagine it's been, yeah, like 
they have to be yeah. really on board with us to figure us out, you know, like, or we have to go down there and kind of get an idea of what it looks like, or the sun came out at a certain time. And that's kind of what we want it to look like. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I think I kind of got it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of communication with them. Mm-hmm. This was the, <laughs> the, the widow maker. And originally she was supposed to be more feral. So she started off as like on the left, like very like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. But it, then towards the end, she became a wise, a wise young child. She's like an old soul in a, in a young body. Mm-hmm. She's lived through so much. I mean, her, a lot of the people that lived in, a, in, in her forest got killed and there was a lot of killing because her dad did so much wrong, you know, and she wants to make it better. So she's a new generation and she is carrying a heavy crown on her head. So we wanted to really make her like her headdress feel heavy and huge. And this is actually based on an authentic penacho or a headdress that that was worn by someone in our history. Yeah. Yeah. So I love cholas. I love chola aesthetic. <laughs> and you could also see that. I don't know if you saw it in my, in my Tigre uh, designs. I also had cholas there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And um, I think one of the reasons is because there's a huge, there was a huge culture of it in Tijuana when I was growing up. And a lot of them lived in the area where my dad had his office. Um, they were like a dying breed because the pachucos were originally there. They're the ones that wore the zoot suits. It's part of the, again, this has to do with culture yeah. um, because they were the ones that were kind of like blending into the United States. They were going in. We were it was the era of uh, Cesar Chavez and when they were fighting for their, for their um, community and their rights. And even before that, where they were like being attacked by the police because of the way, w- what they were wearing. That's what the zoot suit came about from, mm-hmm. you know? So that was Pachucos. That's a long history. We'll go into that later on. But Pachucos, and then after that came Cholos. They were like kind of like the, the thing that came after and they kept up that raza power, right? Mm-hmm. So um, my dad, being a person of very old age, my dad was like 20 years older than my mom. So he had me very old when, when he was, when, when I was born, he tended to the pachucos when, mm-hmm. when, as a doctor, and he got a lot of them because they were like constantly getting into fights. They were getting fist, like stabbed and shanked. And my dad would be like, dude, I'll back you up. I'll, I'll, I'll pay you. And in a way he gained security because they were like hey that's the good good doctor Hero. he's yeah. gonna take care of you we yeah. take care of him you know yeah. he told me that once and i was like that's pretty cool so that went on from generation to generation and the cholos didn't mess with my dad because of the pachucos so we we got to see a couple of them every now and then and uh i had a friend that actually he was kind of a chola and in my generation, there weren't a lot of like people that were that lived in Tijuana. Most mm-hmm. of them lived in the United States. And she was my one of my only friends that lived in Tijuana. And she was a chola. And she lived in Revolution, like near Revolution Avenue, which is kind of the sketchy avenue mm-hmm. in Tijuana. And we became buddies. And she was like, like she was fearless. She was scary. Like, and and I was like, teach me the ways, you know, <laughs> my friend. And like, I'd be like, oh, you know, still like, oh. And she'd be like, yeah, man, don't let him mess with you. What? What are you looking at? You know? And I'd be like, here she was in her like Catholic school uniform, but she (laughs) was her, the head, like the hair. And it was just fascinating. So it's always fascinating me in a way. And I kind of based it on her. Yeah. This was one of our, and, and this character I absolutely adored because she's, in a way, she's kind of like, she has a good heart, but she's bad on the, she, she looks bad on the outside, but she has a good heart on the inside. Yeah. And then we have Chimi, who yeah. obviously be based on the Day of the Dead. Everybody knows who Day of the Dead is. Uh, it's a celebration to celebrate those who aren't with us anymore. It's, it's sacred. Um, it's a beautiful tradition for those who haven't done it. You can practice it. It's not religious. A lot of people think it's religious. It's not really. It's, it's just a special day to remember someone that you lost. And as the saying goes, if you forget that person, that person is really gone. If you keep remembering them, that person's going to be there with you every day, you know? Like, I still feel my dad. Sometimes I'll be like, oh my God, dad, how did I get into this mess? You got to get me out of here, you know? Like, dude, give me a sign somehow, you know? And it's nice to feel that you're not alone. So we have that. 
And here we have some makeup that people do. Here we have like the aesthetic of the tall ceramic being done. And we wanted that tall aesthetic. Also, she's an archer. So we wanted her to kind of to look like, like, a, like an arrow. Mm, smart. And here we have two more of the characters, which That's obviously cool. we got a lot of influence from Peru to, to do the barbarian queen. And uh, this one, Jorge wanted her to look like an MFA fighter. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, okay, all right. So there I am watching MFA and dang, I want to go live now. I want to go yeah, see an actual yeah, fight. Yeah. And, then, and then you did, right? You had your whole MMA career. Uh, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> MMA, sorry. Yeah, MMA. Thank you for the correction. But it's fascinating. They're so strong, you know, and they're so fast. It's very empowering. So um, in the middle, we can see kind of like the, what we do with Jorge as well, where I do the sketch on the Wacom. And he tears it to shreds. <laughs> mm -hmm. He kind of just goes, no, yes, more of this, add this, whatever. And it's great because I'm getting notes that are obvious. Don't go, I can't work with maybe a little more. Give me like more, mm -hmm. more feathers. Give me this, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's awesome. And that way you, you, you work faster. The, mm -hmm. the line production just speeds up a little more when you're more obvious, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And then this is like, uh, uh, these are some posters I made for a, for a friend who was going through some uh, health problems. So we were getting, getting um, money for him. And I did these trees of life and these cactus of life because they also can be cactus and they're very influenced by the ceramics that I showed you a while ago. Beautiful. Again, some more of my heritage. Um, the one on the left was made for a studio in Mexico called Fotografica. Thank you, Kathy, if you're watching for the opportunity. And it was based on women. And for me, the jaguar is a very strong uh, animal. And it's also very well known in the Mexican culture. There is a place in Guerrero who has a dance. They have a dance called El Baile de los Jaguares de Guerrero. I remember, please forgive me if I remember the name, but they are uh, men dressed up as jaguars and it's very violent uh, to symbolize that they're very strong. Like they go up against each other and they fight almost like a wrestling match and they hit each other. It's very, very violent. Um, but that just solidifies the fact that a jaguar is very strong. And around is the cycle of the moon, which is how we give birth, right? Like the moon comes, the moon goes, it wavers. And then on the right, uh, there's a lot of uh, folklore, uh, folkloric artwork that's made up with wood. And I have these little characters actually, they're wooden. I don't know where they are right now, oh. but they look like alebrijes, yeah. Yep. So I was like, they're really cool. And they're kind of like flat and cool. And, and I don't know if you can see them, but um, I decided to put them in a poster I got called by the by the festival in Guadalajara to make a poster and I decided to make them mariachis, put little mariachis outfit on them. Nice. And then there's like a nostalgia from where you're from, right? So I've been I've been living in LA for a long time. And I think that wherever you you live, you tend to get nostalgia if you if you move from where you are originally. So I'm from Tijuana, I live in LA, and we might be a hop, skip, and jump away, but I still remember a lot of things from my childhood. And one of them was a uh, bread place, like a bakery that used to be called La Mejor. So that's why I made a poster. These posters were for a show up at Nucleus. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I love the bread at La Mejor. I love it. I, every time I go, I try and, and, and get some, a box because it's so good. And then obviously El Paletero, which is a guy that goes down the street. Before it was like, before the before it got a little violent down there, <laughs> the, the popsicle men would go down the street and they would have a little bell and you can hear them coming blocks away and kids yeah, would just yeah. like run yeah. and dude there were flies on it and yeah. like there was like dirt <laughs> and dude whatever but you would eat that popsicle that great popsicle on a hot summer day and you'd be like damn this is the best thing ever and your face would just be sticky you know and it smelled like summer so I wanted to make something Got to it. remember that I it. and then I don't know if you know this but there's these things called zebra donkeys or zonkeys in Tijuana do you know about this no. Is it like a is it like a hybrid between like a, a horse and a and a and a and a donkey or what? You would think that, but no. So in Tijuana, there's a, an avenue called Revolution Avenue. It was very touristy. It, it's changed through the years. It has a lot of history. 
And back then they used to do these carts and they would put a, a donkey in the front, but they would dye him white. <laughs> and then they would paint stripes on him and it would look like a donkey. And then they would sit the tourists on the cart and they would put hats on it that said Viva Mexico or Paco or Pedro or Lola or whatever. And they would take your picture in black and white. Legend says that they did it as a donkey so that the animal would show up better, the contrast. But then like it became like an icon of Tijuana. So I decided to do a, a zebra donkey. Wow. And then we have La Ballena Whoa. on the right. And La Ballena is an homage to a bar that was like really old in the 1930s. Yeah. And people would come from everywhere. And this bar was really, really long, like blocks long. And the counter was blocks long too. That's why it was called La Ballena because it was a whale of a table, a whale of a bar. Oh, so I did that in a marsh to it. Beautiful. More, more, more trees of life, more hair. Mm -hmm. Oops. And then Beautiful. the one on the left is an homage to what I used to take to go to school. <laughs> so after I went to school in high school, the walk was really far from where I lived. So I'd have to take a, a taxi and the taxis look like that. And sometimes they smell like vanilla and sweat because there would be people of all wakes in there. And I'm talking about homeless people. I'm talking about like, like very uppity bank people, yeah. really crusty looking or like guys that just came off of the field playing football after a yeah. really hot day. And you'd be like stuck between them. And I wasn't snobby, but it, it was like the taxi driver would always be like, hey, you coming up front with me, huh? And I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. And there wasn't space anywhere else, only in the front. So I'd have to be between this taxi driver and this fat man with like his belly sticking out and, and a bumper sticker in the front that said only beautiful people in the front. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh my God, it's only five minutes. It's only five minutes because they, the way they drove, they drove so fast. They had disregard for people. So yeah. it's one of my favorite, favorite, um, yeah, one of my favorite memories. And then as the last thing, I just want to put, you know, it's good to step out of the norm and mess around with different styles. And these are just three different styles that I started messing around with expanding my my the way I draw and one of them was for a friend the one on the left was for a friend the one in the middle was for a foundation called surface healing and it's a foundation um a friend of ours owns it his name is Izzy Paskowitz he's uh -huh. fantastic he does it for kids that have um disabilities uh -huh. and he puts them on these surfboards uh -huh. Like these were to raise, we were asked to do one Jorge and myself and I did this one for money to raise funds for this for this um, foundation. And it's fascinating. Like these kids on top of the water, Luca got on it. Like as for, for people that don't know, Luca has is on the autism spectrum when he was younger. We took him here and Izzy, oh my God, he got him on that board. He took him like really far. I'm not talking little because to catch a wave, you really have to go far. So that was an amazing experience. And then on the right I, is a poster I did for Carla Morrison, one of my favorite uh, vocalists. And it was an honor to do it. So that's right. about it. May it <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done, well done. Beautiful, beautiful work. So inspiring. Thank you guys, um, thank you. So man, I can't even, yeah uh so inspiring and 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 thank you for generously sharing your your body of work and walking us down the path what you've gone through all the different avenues you went through all the different platforms and all the kinds of amazing and uh yeah we can't thank you enough that was so inspiring man and, guys thank you and, for having me yeah yeah and, and and even how you're just kind of like the way that you're kind of authentically pulling from your culture and doing the research and talking to people talking to your family talking to Jorge and making those trips and digging into your childhood memories. That's really, that's really inspiring. Thank you guys. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, yeah uh, because for some people, they feel a little bit uncomfortable sharing their heritage. So this, this, thank you for just telling people it's okay to, to show where you come from. So thank oh, you, Sanja. It's a lot of fun. Our culture is very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I, I, I brought uh, Cindy on uh, real quick. Hey, Cindy. Uh, 
she can. Uh, oh my god! I can't believe my ears. Like the three of you guys. <laughs> what? I hit the jackpot. <laughs> I'm such a big fan. Thank you. To for all you guys, I can't believe it. It's my first time on this oh. webinar and on this uh, program. And yeah. And I just found you guys like two days ago. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. I'm like, oh my God, awesome. Sandra's going to be talking. Oh my God. I know. How do I work my computer? <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Cindy, uh, apologies for for kind of like uh, like butchering your 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 questions beforehand. But if you now you it's yeah uh, you you have the floor. Oh, I I just wanted to say. Uh, well, first I'd like to thank all of you guys for this um, this um, forum. It's awesome. And um, I also want to thank Sandra for being the muse for not just for her husband, but for me as well. Um, as you can tell, Hi. I'm a little seasoned and <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been in this animation business for a long time. And, um, you know, I've raised my family. I've been in and out here and there, but still trying to keep it fresh and new art. and interested in art. Yeah. yeah, interested in art and animation. And um, I just very rarely get to meet um, people uh, in Sandra and I would like to say my generation because um, when we started, there weren't really a lot of women and a lot of my cohorts actually became producers because they couldn't take the pressures exactly. anymore. Yeah, they were like, well, you know, if I can't draw, I'll just, you know, try to control the narrative, right? And yeah, the other way. Yeah. So um, with Sandra, I just wanted to reach out to you because we're peers and I just wanted to ask you, um, how do you feel about being, if I could say older women, because animation is like Logan's run. If you're over 30, you know, who are you? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I completely <laughs> agree. It's very, and it's very, very scary at the same time because you see yeah. all these kids coming out and they're geniuses. And now with the internet, you know, I sound like an old person again, what the internet? But with yeah. the internet, you're getting to see these kids posting online. They have their portfolios online. They reach out right. directly, which I, I salute you, man. That's what you should be doing from the start. Just no fear going out there and saying, hey, this is my work and whatever, right? But, right. you know, I feel like, we need to keep learning from them just like how they can learn from us in many aspects because we have a lot to share to them as well um and there's a lot that a lot of kids out there that will listen some of them won't but a lot of them will and we're kind of like the ghost of christmas future you know <laughs> like you know like listen to what we're saying and they have a lot to teach us as well you know you always have to be on the up and up of what they're doing and like i said before on um, what's happening um, I think that you, as a, as a person of an older generation, you have to be constantly aware, not only of what's happening in the world, but what's happening in culture everywhere, right. everywhere. Like what's, what's going on now? You can't be shut to it. And that kind of keeps us young in a way, you know, you kind of have right. to, be, yeah, as it is in animation, you have to have a young soul. I think. Right. And I think that you know? especially now our voice is, it's now okay for our voice to be heard. Yes. For a long time, we were kind of like trying to get into the status quo. And then now here we are a little older and, and people are actually coming up to us and wanting our point of view and our take on it. And it's, it's, it's really an explosion cool. of like fruit flavors. I can't get over it. <laughs> an explosion of fruit flavors. That's a really good way of saying it. I'm so proud to be living in this era. Yeah. You know, it's a very fast moving medium too, you know, and I'm, I'm just so happy that we are being able to be part of it. Yes. Yes. And I love your aesthetic and I love the truth that you've held on to it, you know, cause a lot of women in our generation, and I say women, because we're also trying to fit into another niche, right. That, um, it's really tough. And I think it's, uh, it's amazing that, you know, you've held on this long with your estate. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, I have to give credit a large part of it to Jorge. I mean, Jorge has, is a champion, has been my champion from day one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that a lot of us, I mean, specifically from my background, I had a, a kind of not a low self-esteem, but I definitely had like my questions as to whether or not I was an artist, especially since I was from a graphic design background. 
And he was looking at my stuff and he was like, well, you are graphic design, but at the same time, I feel like you're gravitating more to, towards other things. Play around with that a little more, you know, like uh, see what you got. And I was like, okay. So I eventually I figured out that I did love character design. I love the, that stuff. And I mean, I have to also give him credit to him and his mom, also my mom for opening my eyes up more my culture because before I met Jorge the only part of it I knew was Michoacan which was down there but I didn't know the significance of it I didn't know the richness of it until I met Jorge so a lot of that came with that and I feel like a lot of the stuff that I knew I passed on to him and a lot of that we're passing it on to Jorge so we're like a trio you know it's it goes from generation to generation you got to do that right exactly um okay well what if the second part of my question was um we already talked about sort of our old school skills what do you find that a lot of younger generations are using that um are really helpful for you uh, in your current career um in my technology wise or are you talking about what, what are you talking uh, about either way both um you know uh i think maybe technology wise i have to say since i come from again from graphic design i was uh, from a generation where the computers were barely beginning to be integrated. So I didn't get a lot of, of uh, backup when it came to programs to design, even though you think graphic design is everything like you do it in design, you know, you do it in Photoshop, you do it in whatever, you know, even in Corel when you're first starting off, I didn't have access to that. My dad didn't get me a computer until way later on, almost when I graduated. So ask me about Photoshop. Curiously, I am like almost... Photoshop illiterate. So I've, I've done almost everything, believe it or not, on a program that's almost obsolete called Flash. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it's, it's almost obsolete. Like I had a friend who, and there's no shame in that either, because I've heard that if you wield your sword well in one aspect, keep going, you know, like keep designing in that. But also what I've also added to that is to learn new things, new technology, new, new ways of incorporating that. And right now I'm really in love with Procreate, which is something that someone taught me recently. Like, dude, if you, if you have difficulty with Photoshop and if you're doing flash, Procreate is your jam, dude, because it's, it's like, it's like, a, you're going to go like a kid in a candy store. And it's, it's so bad right now that I can't, I can't stop at a file. Like, I'll be like, what does this do? What does this do? And what does this do? I just keep going. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know? And then I log on to like, tutorials and I log into like classes and I ask people and how do you do this no fear I have no shame re really like when I ask uh, like newer generations about things I don't feel like what do they know like if you if you're gonna have that personality going at them you're not gonna get anywhere you gotta keep learning you know yeah absolutely you gotta stop and ask for directions you gotta stop and <laughs> exactly yeah um Okay, I think, uh, uh, well, we already talked about kind of staying relative in the field and that's sort of staying fresh and up on technology, but um, I was wondering what you see for yourself in the future. You know, just keep working. Keep working until I can. I love to teach. I would love to dabble in things that I haven't had the opportunity to. Since I am constantly working, I always have one foot in the animation world, but I also have my foot in the, in the world of motherhood. Right. So um, balancing those are also kind of a, it's kind of hard. If anything, I've always wanted to do like a panel with mothers, you know, the, in, the, in the industry, just to like say it's hard. Okay. Like right. we're, kind of, we're kind of overlooked sometimes a lot. And um, I feel like this is a, a theme that keeps coming up, but uh, they haven't put too much relevance into it um, because as women, you know, and as, as mothers, we are creatives. And when we are, when we have the opportunity to have children and, and our, our focus shifts and we feel mm -hmm. the guilt of, yes. I'm also a creative, but I don't want to ignore my motherhood, you know? So it, it's broken up into two pieces. And then like, we kind of begin to like 
shy away from our art sometimes and that creates a sense of frustration and mm -hmm. that's that's a, a a very interesting theme that that we could talk about maybe in a panel one day you know yeah i i i used to think as my peers most of them were men were able to kind of like go off and work long hours and do all these things and i was over here bearing children i was thinking like i wish i had a wife like me so i could be a artist yeah yeah, yeah. It, is, it is really hard yeah it is so uh an applause to all the mothers out there that are in the field yeah, yeah. mothers in animation Ooh. mothers in animation that's what it should be called yeah 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 I, yeah I, I think that's um well it was just really lovely talking to you and I connecting well. with another soul from huh. in, in cali in cali Anytime. yeah cali yeah and um thank you everybody for you know putting together this forum it's been really great and thank you for including me i really appreciate it thank you Sydney. Sydney. thank you for coming in to uh rise up and we appreciate it too oh i'll be thank coming you for more. Down, Those yeah are questions thank you awesome. Awesome. thank you guys um yeah i think we should uh cindy with that that was a perfect perfect like uh yeah cherry on top of just kind of this conversation and thank you for bringing your questions uh sandra we couldn't thank you enough um and that was lovely and it was so funny because like you formatted the panel for us and we're just like yeah, that's, that's all. Yeah, just just have sandra just all we have to do is like have sandra on and she'll she'll like format the whole panel for us and then she'll just kind of like bring it home and uh we uh that was lovely we couldn't be more thankful for your experience you guys are, you guys are so perfect too you made it so easy and non-scary <laughs> non-scary you try yeah, yeah chinera too she was like i got gotcha. you yeah i got it <laughs> yeah chinera was super excited to uh to uh, uh co-host and co-moderate this panel and uh she yeah thank you chinera for 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 um for doing all the hard work and uh, Sandra and and uh, everybody else. I mean, for me, uh, like me personally, like um, hearing Sandra speak and um, showing her presentation. I mean, like I, <clears throat> it was people. I honestly, I will say, not only because you guys are here, but Jorge and Sandra, their kind of like career path and everything that they're doing now and how hard they worked over the the last couple of years and finally kind of like it coming, not finally, but like it coming to fruition and growing, culminating in my and the three and then a uh, beyond um, it is really inspiring for me too. Uh, just like as a Filipino American and just trying to go like, oh my God, they're doing it. And they're telling me that I can do it. Maybe I could do it. You know, they're telling us, you know, they're telling us to go out there. This is, they're, and not only that, they're telling us, but they're breaking down doors. They're breaking down kind of barriers um, to get this content made. And for every success that they have, it's a win for all of us that are trying to make stories that are deep rooted in our culture, deep rooted in our folklore, deep rooted into heritage. Everything we're trying to do in the future to make the animation industry more diverse and inclusive have more stories out there that are kind of, that are like that but um they and they looking at their career and their journey have empowered me a hundred percent uh personally and professionally so for that um i i will thank you uh sandra and jorge thank you. Thank you, and guys. um it, you yeah. know and that's uh i yeah it, it means more to me than you know uh, uh, we're all paying attention. I'm paying attention. I'm looking at you guys, studying you guys, and watching you. And oh no! Inspiring. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. That was uh, that was creepy. That was creepy. I don't mean in your window at home in in uh, in Studio City. Bobby, uh, I mean, you can see everyone open the window like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bobby's watching. Because they always talk about like they always talk about success leaves clues, right? So yes. now that you guys are successful, or you guys have been successful, and you guys are very open about your um, career and what you've done, you're leaving clues for all of us. And I'm just latching onto those like, nah, 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 like Barry, like, oh, oh, okay, this is what you do, this is what you do. Yeah. So, um, wow, I'm I'm creepy this morning, guys. I'm so sorry. No, you're not, Bobby. No, if anything, thank you for your creepiness. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to well, thank you for. I want to thank you guys for for doing this. Yeah. You no, know, like it's 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 easier said than done. 
And I know people that are like, oh, we should, but I'm, you guys are actually getting in there and you're getting like nice and dirty and going in there and getting like people out there and pulling people out of their comfort zones and, and, and having people talk. Because if we don't talk, you know, like you said, we're not going to be able to open more doors. We're not, people are not going to know what's going on. And uh, thank you. 100%. And with that, uh, we'll close it out. Chinera, do you want to sign us off? Sandra? 100 million thank yous. Thank and you. uh, Shanara, sign us off with our tagline that we don't haven't made up yet, but enjoy your Saturday, Sundays, everybody. It's great to yeah, see you. Yeah. Uh, Rise of the Foundation on. fam. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.